Okay, we're going to introduce MapEx, which is a browser-based image exploitation system. So here I am running Chrome, and I'm just going to, in a web browser tab, start MapEx. Log in and start the application. So we are an image analyst tasked with monitoring uh, particular sites around the world. Uh, in this instance, we're going to monitor uh, a site for treaty verification to verify uh, that uh, aircraft, uh, military aircraft scheduled for decommissioning indeed remain decommissioned. So to do that from our uh, catalog, our shoebox, we're going to go ahead and display multiple dates of imagery. It'll bring up uh, a 2003 image, which shows uh, just at the southern edge of the image uh, an airfield. And we're going to go ahead and adjust the contrast. With the contrast adjusted, we're going to go ahead and select our later date 2005 image and display as overlay. This image, we're also going to go ahead and adjust the contrast. Now we want to find the site we test with monitoring. So we're going to zoom to a scale of one to one, go ahead and drive to a military grid reference system coordinate. Here we can see the site that we are interested in monitoring. It's an area uh, of concrete apron and a group of aircraft which are supposedly military aircraft being decommissioned. In order to analyze whether uh, the treaties are being adhered to, we can go to the contents panel on the right and choose tools such as swipe or blend fade and compare the dates of imagery. Can pan and roam the area for more detail. And you can see in the space of the uh, two years of imagery that we have, the aircraft certainly appear to have remained stationary with no change and no um, uh, work being performed. However, you can see some areas where the apron has been upgraded in that space of two years. So the airport is definitely active, but in this time span, the ex-military aircraft have remained where they need to remain. Today, we've received some the latest satellite imagery of the area. Uh, so we want to continue to monitor our site and determine whether any further change has occurred. So we'll go ahead and display uh, the latest high-resolution panchromatic imagery of the area. Again, we'll adjust the contrast. And we'll go ahead and zoom into our area of interest. So we'll zoom in a little and uh, attempt to do a similar swipe operation and see an immediate problem, which is that the new image does not align correctly with the prior imagery. That's a little more obvious if I do a blend fade. And you see the positional difference between the two dates of imagery. So our next task is to go ahead and uh, adjust 
the panchromatic new 2009 image so it lines up with our existing imagery. To do this, we're going to go back to our shoebox, clear the existing data, and go ahead and set up to do an adjustment. We're going to display as image our panchromatic data. We're going to go ahead and orient it uh, as it's a north down image. We're going to rotate the imagery so north is up. go ahead and start a second split view. We need to look at the same shoebox and adjust our imagery so it matches up with our existing multispectral. Display that image as well. We will go ahead and link the two views so that they adjust to the same scale and location as we pan and zoom. To adjust the imagery, we're going to go ahead and use one of the geoprocessing tools available in MapEx. In this case, we're going to use Adjust Georeferencing 2D. We're going to go ahead and collect common points between the two images. So we click Collect. I'm going to change my point color in both views and collect the first point. And we can see we've collected a row column that long and a height for that value. Next, we continue and collect some other widely distributed points. Once we have sufficient points collected, we can go ahead and compute a solution. Provide a name. And perform the adjustment so that the panchromatic image should line up with our existing data. Go ahead and get rid of the uh, second view. Go back to our shoebox. We want to display our earlier data. And overlay our adjusted new 2009 image over the top. Now we can analyze our site area again using the blend fade tool. So we can look at the newer imagery, and blend back from 2009 to 2003. And what we can start to see is that there have been 
quite a few developments in this area over that time span. One point to notice if we zoom a little on the northern area is that one of the decommissioned aircraft appears to have been moved and there is some facility changes occurring uh, to the northern area of this, air, this uh, location. Since there appear to be differences uh, and uh, changes that we need on-site visit to validate uh, what is happening to these aircraft, we're going to go ahead and create a report. The first step of which is to go ahead and create some annotation to highlight the areas of change. First, we want to add a polygon to highlight the area of change. including encompassing the area where the aircraft originally was. So we will add a green rectangle. Next, we will add a text label. Finally, as we need to task a uh, site visit to this location to verify what's happening to this uh, decommissioned aircraft, we're going to go ahead and create a report. The report uses a standardized template that we can customize. Uh, we can store PAN and ROAM data within the report and align things as we wish also change the annotations, titles, and so on. So we'll change the title. And add a subtitle. And we can send this uh, to the printer to create a paper copy, or we can export to PowerPoint if we wish to gather several slides. The slide has been created, and we can go ahead and click to open PowerPoint. And now we have a PowerPoint template uh, populated with our new slide that we could go ahead and send to our cultural attaché in this particular city to go out and verify what's happening. Unfortunately, uh, this aircraft proved to uh, not be in the process of being recommissioned for use, but was actually being moved to this facility for dismantling and carrying away for scrap.